Okay, here's another question. We need to find the acceleration of this object. Mu sub k is 0.4, mu sub s is 0.45, it's a 5 kilogram object. Here's a person pulling on a rope <coughs> with 65 newtons. A person pulling on a rope with 65 newtons at an angle of 67 degrees. So the, the kinetic friction can be less than the static friction? The, the coefficient can be less than this coefficient. In fact, in practice, I think this uh, always or usually is less. That's right. Just um, checking yeah. if you're on your toes. <laughs> That's a good question. Yep. Okay. So when you're ready, how should we start here? Well, we always start with a free body, body diagram. diagram. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, what are the forces on this object? MG is MG downwards. Friction. What's the direction of the friction? To the left. Yeah, how do we know? Well, if this was going to slide, it would slide to the right. So the direction that opposes sliding is to the left. Ooh. Friction always acts to oppose sliding. Question, is it moving or not? We're going to have to figure that out. So this problem, we, didn't, we weren't told whether it's moving or oh, not. Oh, we know the tension. 265 yeah. at a 67 degree angle. Good. Any other forces besides tension, friction, and the weight? Normal force. Yeah. Remember that basically friction and the normal force go together because they're both coming from surfaces. So anytime you write down friction, you should think about the normal force. And anytime you write down the normal force, you should think about friction. Otherwise, people tend to forget those. This is a case where the normal force is pointing straight up. So in order to see if it's moving, we have to see whether the x component of the tension is bigger we find acceleration. And we first have to just be positive and negative Right? Yeah. So let's, not, let's, try, not, let's yeah. try not to cut corners here. But let me yeah. give you some help with this. Guys, so on. how can we, uh, yeah, this is a little bit different than what we've seen before. Um, so this is a question that asks, basically we have to decide whether something is going to happen here. We have to decide, will this slide or will it won't, or will it not? That's a different type of question that we've dealt with previously. All the previous questions, we kind of knew generally what was going to happen. This is the first time where we have to figure out, will something happen or won't it? Well, there's a method for dealing with this type of problem. First of all, we have to make an assumption. We should either assume that it will move or assume that it won't move. Well, how do you know which one to assume? The general principle is make an assumption that will give you an inequality that you should use. Make an assumption that will give you an inequality that you can use. So in this case, we should assume no sliding. Because that would involve static friction, and, give, and that gives us this inequality. We should not assume that it is going to slide, because that doesn't give us an inequality. And as we work through the problem, you'll see why we need an inequality. So this is the general method when you're trying to figure out whether something will happen or not. Um, should you assume that it will happen or that it won't happen? Well, make the assumption that will give you an inequality that you should use. This is just one example of that. Because the is For friction, it'll be won't. There's other types of problems, too. For example, you might see a problem like, will an object lose contact with the surface, say? Say, will a roller coaster fall off the track? Well, then you have to decide, should you assume that it will or should you assume that it won't? Well, we won't have time to go through that today, but you'll make the assumption that gives you an inequality. Well, but you're right, for friction, so for friction, we can just say what you said. For friction, you should assume that it won't slide, because that gives you the inequality. There is no inequality for kinetic friction. So now we should go through the whole Newton's second law process assuming that there's no sliding. The whole process assuming that there's no sliding. Uh, okay, so now this is going to be static friction. Uh, let's see, and we know what this weight is, or we can calculate this weight. Five times 9.8. Negative 49. Keep doing that. Negative 49 if we choose these as our positive directions. All right, um, what else do I need to do in this free body diagram? We should probably break into components. You've got to break this tension into components. I like to do that in a whole separate picture, because this is already complicated enough. Here the components are easy. They are horizontal and vertical. <coughs> what direction are the components pointing in? Um, to the right and then up. Because the overall vector is that way. Let's just go ahead and put in the signs right now so we don't forget. 
the two components of the tension are going to be up. How do we calculate Tx? 65 times. Cosine of 67. Yeah. Tx is adjacent, so that would be 65 times cosine 67, which comes out to be 25.4. Mm -hmm. And then Ty would be 65 times sine 67, because this is opposite to the 67. Positive 59.8. Yes. OK, so you can see you really have to get to the point where breaking things into components is easy for you, because this is supposed to be one of the easy steps of the problem. All right, so I'll write those over here. We have Tx is equal to positive 25.4 newtons. Ty is equal to positive 59.8 We're going to do Newton's second law. Yeah, how many equations would that give us here? Um, There's only one object, but it has two components that we need to pay attention to. Which Newton's second law should we work with first here, the x or the y? Probably the y first so we can figure out normal force because yeah. it's not moving in the y direction. Yeah. So what should I list as the forces here? The y yeah. should equal normal force minus... Plus the normal force. Yeah. Good. Minus 49. Minus 49. Anything else? Um, not on that side. Oh, yeah, and the y component of the tension, which we found to be 59.8. All right, this is something you should highlight. This is something that people tend to leave out, this y component of the tension over here. Remember, the whole point of the tension is that it had both x and y components. So don't forget. Basically, what you should do, to be sure, is look at every single force and mentally ask yourself, does this have a y component? That way you know you won't leave anything out. Because if you leave a force out here, all of the rest of our work will be wasted. So just go through every single force, every single time, and ask, does this have an x component? Does this have a y component? Does this have a y component? Yes. Does this have a y component? No. Does this have a y component? Yes. Does this have a y component? Yes. So we got all of those. And what should we write on the right-hand side? Zero. Good. So then if we solve for the normal force, we'll get All right, well, this is turning out to be more interesting than I wanted. All right, so this comes out to be? Negative 10.8. How is it a negative normal force? That means it's jumping off the ground, right? So yeah. inside the box is moving, so we need right. to do it again. So I didn't mean to be uh, like this. So what we got here is that the magnitude of the normal force is negative, which is impossible, right? Magnitudes can't be negative, right. which means we must have made a wrong assumption. Well, the wrong assumption that we made is that this is not going to move vertically. Right. But after all, if you're tugging on something upward on a rope, it's always possible that you could lift it off the ground. Yes. yes. All right. Um, and uh, so this person is actually going to tug this right off the ground. Right. Uh, it's going to go up into the air. Um, all right. I didn't mean to do that in this problem, but this is the kind of thing you can see on text. Remember I was saying a second ago that one type of question asks you, is an object going to slide or not? But another type of question asks you, is the object going to lose contact with the surface? Well, I accidentally made this into that type of question. Um, so if you get that the normal force has a negative magnitude, you know that really it's going to be losing contact with the surface. So at this point, we'd probably just stop and say this is going to lose contact with the surface. You're actually going to see questions like this maybe in a week or two. You might start doing roller coaster problems. And you have questions like, what does it take to keep the roller coaster from losing contact as it goes across the top of the wheel? All right, um, the reason I messed up on this is I didn't mean for this to be a rope. I meant for this to be a person that was pushing in this direction. Uh, um, or let's see, let's, uh, let's try to get this to work out right here. So let's say this is, uh, let's say the person is pushing like this, 65 newtons at 67 degrees. And the person is pushing um, like this. So now this is not the tension, this is just the force of the person. Here's the force of the person in the x component and the y component. I'm trying to fix this so we don't have to change too many things. All right, so now, how would that change this over here? The normal force, the weight, 
Oh, now the y component here would be negative. That's right. Now this person is pushing down on the object. So now the normal force would look like this, uh, down and negative. So this would turn out to be negative 49 plus 59.8. All right, so uh, now when we make that change, uh, now, since the person is pushing down on the object, there's no way it can lose contact with the ground. Um, so now, again, we're assuming that there's no sliding. This normal force would be 